What's on your mind, Alicia Mackay? I'm in a bit of a tipping point changing spot and I've just written this book. It's about strategic leadership and the things they don't teach you but one of the really key messages in it is around getting to a point in your life or in your career or in your leadership where doing more of what you're great at no longer helps you. In fact, doing more of what you're great at starts to hurt you. And I came to the realisation in my little self isolating retreat as I finished the book, oh, the reason this book means so much to me is because it's deeply personal. This is the shift I'm encountering in my own life and in my own business and in my own leadership as well. It's going to be a good book then. It's quite good. Because it's real. I really mean it. And So you should read it, perhaps. Well, sometimes I read some of my own stuff or something you've done and I'm like, that's quite good. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, we did that. Like that, what's on your mind we did the other week. I watched it back and I was like, oh, I needed I needed this today. Yeah. And then I thought, yeah. hang on, that was me. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about the tippy point because yeah. the changey spot. Yeah. Because like, we all have those. I, th- I think so. And I'm really interested in, because I, I find this a lot. The reason I've written this book is I find this a lot with the teams that I work with. So they've invested mm-hmm. and invested and invested in their skill set. And they're high performing and they've got deep technical expertise and they really know their shit. Like they're awesome, right? And they've reached a point where that's not enough anymore. And in fact, not only is that not enough, it's holding them back. And the things that they need to tip over the edge and actually start having real impact is things like um, having impact at scale, influencing others, thinking longer term, making bigger decisions, you know, that that tipping point stuff. And like I've had a bit of that too. Like I've run on um, just pure grit and determination and, and hours yeah. for years and I'm at the point in my own business and my own life where that doesn't help me anymore. So it's kind of like um, the metaphor might be something like an operating system, right? So yeah. you run on, I don't know, an old version of Mac OS or you are running on Windows 8 or Vista or something rubbish like that. Mate, I work and with some leaders who are running on Windows 95. Yeah, Windows 3.1. <laughs> and the demands of the world are loading up on you and so it's like actually i need to upgrade my operating system as in the way i have think about the world the way i see myself my identity all yeah that sort of stuff right so it's not doing more it's doing different because for a certain mm-hmm. period of time just doing more will get you where you need to go and the problem is that you end up with these overdeveloped strengths that after a while not only are they not helping you, they're actually a problem. So for me, that's things around being really driven and really yep. um, determined and really forceful and really high performing. After a while, that's a real problem yep. because it's alienating for relationships and it's not great leadership from a team management perspective and it means that I've ended up underdeveloped around things. Can, can I enabling say something about that? Yeah. So I reckon you're not dropping it. You're not moving away from no. it. You're, you're knowing when to dial up that skill, but yeah. also it's broadening your... Skill set. Exactly. Yeah, or broadening exactly. your mindset. Right? It's, it's a right sizing thing. Going, you know mm-hmm. what, we need to pull a bit of that back and in its place, what we actually need is a bit more enabling, a bit so, more empowering. So the classic, I reckon, I reckon that is an identity transition, right? Because mm-hmm. if you think about one mm-hmm. of the classic transitions that one of the hardest ones you're ever going to make is when you are really good, te- technically good at whatever you're doing. Like accountant, I used to be an accountant, right? And then you become a team leader. Yeah. And then it's not about you being awesome at your accounting. It's about you being awesome and helping others be awesome, right? Yeah. And that is such a mind shift that, and a lot of people will struggle because they, they don't recognize that changey tippy point that's in front of them. And they go, oh no, I'll just keep driving. And they, yeah. the others will, they'll, others will follow they'll me. They'll come along. They'll come along. I think what's worse is when you've, you've been promoted, you're more senior now, you've got people to look after. And you're like, right, now I have to look after people as well. As well. So they make the shift, but they don't leave anything behind. And, and do you hear that, when am I going to get to do my real work? Yeah. Which is typically the technical work, right? The comfort zone stuff. Because yeah. this people stuff's hard, right? So that's one example of a shift. Oh, of, totally. Yeah, yeah. But yours is different, I think. Yours is less about that. It's more about, I, I'm hearing less drivey and more um, perspective yeah, because we've talked a few times in the last few episodes about making thinking space and creating yep. that kind of margin and, yep. and having that strategic outlook. Yep. And it's such a shift to go from jamming, just jamming things in, to going in order to do the best stuff that best serves the most amount of people to get mm-hmm. to where I want to go. I need the space to be creative totally. and to think and to create and do things and make the, things. The word than I was working. using, I was using this word this morning on a webinar. I was running and the word was potent. 
Oh, yeah. And I, I like the idea of potency. It's like it's it's like leverage, right? It's this idea that you can be have a massive impact with a tiny little amount. And the exactly. metaphor I was using was like, you know, there's paprika, and it's like it's it's like red, sort of dusty, powdery stuff, but it's not very potent, right? You know, you, you don't it doesn't blow your mouth off when you have a mouthful of paprika. Yeah. <laughs> not that I do that very but often. But I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't go eating a spoonful. No, but really. I, I feel you. Yeah, yeah. Versus cayenne pepper. Yeah. Which looks the same. But man, is it potent, right? And this idea, like, you want to be, I think, a bit more cayenne pepper totally. with your approach to life, right? Like, how do I have massive impact with little effort? That's yeah. kind of, that's the question we're both asking, I think. Yeah, and, like, I ran a workshop this morning with a team, and they are really bright thinkers who need to be more visible and have more influence around their stakeholders and just kind of bring more people along with them, right? And we're having a conversation around the idea that you have reached the ceiling of effort. Yeah. More effort will no longer help yeah, yeah. you. Yeah. Your work is great. You're credible. Yeah. You're professional. That's the excellent. The point of decreasing returns. You are now at the point where, yeah, you've hit the ceiling. Yeah. And I guess the, the question I've got left is around how can you tell when you've reached the ceiling of your effort? Hey. And what do you need to do to step away and cross the line to something different. So another way of asking that question is, how do you know when you've reached your changey tippy point mm. where doing more isn't going to cut it, but actually doing different is? How do you know where that point is and what are your choices? 